Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sam Ox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 where I have a more subtle question to answer than I normally do and that is what if we replace the boosters on the H2B rocket, these four small SRBA boosters, with the two boosters on the GSLV Mark III from India. The liftoff thrust of the combinations, the four boosters here versus the two boosters there, are roughly the same. Uh, these boosters are slightly more efficient than the Indian boosters, however the Indian boosters last longer. So what is the balance? Uh, could we get a benefit from replacing these? First of all, we had to test the payload capacity of these boosters in Kerbal Space Program. In real life, the rocket is rated for 19 tons to lower orbit out of Tanegashima. This is where we are launching, and I did this during live stream. I tried multiple times to get it to do 19 tons, but it wasn't quite making it. That might be because of the thrust curve on the SRBs, might be because of other factors that are slightly inaccurate, aerodynamic forces that aren't quite being applied right. So it's tough to say, but we needed to get a consistent result in Kerbal Space Program for this rocket in this configuration. And I got 17.5 tons, which is what I'm carrying here after multiple tests. So KOS is launching the rocket so that the launch trajectory is consistent. And what we have here is it falls a little bit short at the end, but I decided that it was all right. We could tweak the trajectory just a little bit in order to make it work out and make orbit. So, or we could have used the RCS or something like that or loaded less RCS. There's a whole bunch of possibilities to close the gap to orbit here. So I decided that 17.5 tons was an okay estimate. In real life, the H2B only ever launched 16.5 tons, but that was to the orbit of the International Space Station, which is at a greater inclination. So these are the GSLV Mark III boosters, the S200 boosters from India. And these have the same, basically the same liftoff thrust as the four boosters you just saw, but they are physically much larger because there's only two of them taking the job before, and they last 14 seconds longer. Uh, their efficiency is a little bit less than the Japanese boosters, but not a whole lot less. And so here we have them finishing up their burn, and off they go. Now, of course, because there's only two boosters instead of four, uh, they get less drag right because there's less surface area encountering the atmosphere and drag is calculated based uh, partly based on surface area and then other things there is also the actual uh, drag coefficient and the cones are a little bit different but uh, we'll set that aside i don't think Kerbal space program will give us a uh, fine enough uh, physics simulation for the cones at the top of the vessel but who knows now here we are carrying 20 tons because in the VAB I decided that 20 tons seemed to be getting us the delta V we needed and we still had 100 meters per second left. So I decided to increase the payload to 21 tons which means it's 3.5 tons more than the standard configuration of the H2B. Now at the start I didn't know that there was going to be any benefit at all so this was a surprise result though a satisfying one. Now the pad mass of this is much higher than H2B because again the boosters are carrying more propellant they last longer so again on balance the question was they last longer but then you're carrying that mass and using more of the efficient engine to carry those boosters for extra time so there's that and oh so their efficiency is just a little bit less so it was a question mark but they seem to get substantially more payload capacity to orbit than the standard Japanese boosters with the four booster configuration. Because the liftoff thrust is the same, I wouldn't expect there to be any changes necessary for the core. Uh, no structural changes or reinforcement necessary to use these boosters versus the other ones, but the attachment points would have to be modified, the decouplers would have to be modified, etc. Of course. But uh, yeah, so it's a situation where a collaboration could be possible, but then again, the Japanese are developing the H3 rocket to replace this anyway, so we'll see how that one does. It probably outperforms the H2B anyway. So, with that little test, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.